All right, now we're gonna take a look at confidence intervals, and we're gonna start by looking at proportions. So one of the issues that happens when we are doing a hypothesis test is we have to have that parameter value, that mu or p value, not p value, the proportion, the population proportion value that we get from either a prior study or you know, some claim that we found. We have to have that value in order to create our null and alternative hypotheses. However, sometimes you may not be able to find that parameter value because you're the first one doing the study, there is no prior research, there's nothing for you to compare it to. In those cases, one of the things that you can do is create a confidence interval. So we're gonna look at how we can create a confidence interval. All we have is sample information. We don't have anything from the population to be able to compare it to. So the first thing is obtaining a point estimate for what the population proportion might be. So this is like our starting point. We're saying, okay, I don't know what the population proportion is. And remember the population proportion is P. So I'm going to find a best guess as like a starting value. And in the case of proportions, that best guess, that point estimate is P hat, our sample proportion. And as a reminder, we calculate P hat by taking X, the number of individuals with the characteristic that we're looking at, divided by N, the number of people in our sample size. So all of our confidence intervals are gonna start with a point estimate, a sample proportion, and we're going to build an interval around that. So an interval is a range of values. So the equation for a confidence interval for a population proportion, we start with our point estimate, p hat, and then we're going to add and subtract. So we're going to do this equation twice, and by adding and subtracting, that's going to give us a range of values. That's going to give us this interval. And then we're going to get a z-score. This z-score is called the critical value. And it is based on an alpha over two. And we'll talk more about that down below here in a few minutes. And then finally, we multiply that critical value by the standard deviation for proportions. And notice in this formula, I am now using p hat instead of p because I don't know what p is and I'm using p hat as my estimate for what p would be. This is the only time that you use p hat in the standard deviation formula. All other times that we're using this formula, the square root of p times one minus p divided by n, those are p's. In a confidence interval, we use p hat because we don't know what p the population proportion is. So this equation is going to give us an interval, a range of potential values that p, the population proportion, could fall between. And I forgot the e on the end of that word. So a piece of this formula is called the margin of error. The margin of error is an amount that is allowed for in case of a miscalculation or a change of circumstance. This is the amount that is added and subtracted from the point estimate. So the whole second half of the equation, that z-score or critical value times the standard deviation is called the margin of error and it is shorthanded typically by a capital E. So the margin of error. And again, it's found by a z-score, also known as our critical value, and then our p, 
times one minus p divided by n in the square root, and those p's are p hats. That's our standard deviation formula. So let's look at what we are actually doing here. What's happening? So let's say we want to find an 86% confidence interval for the population proportion P. And we have calculated P hat to be 0.5. So this is a simple example, basic example of what we would do. One of the things about confidence intervals is that they are always used with normal data. So they're always used with data that comes from a normal distribution. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a normal curve so that we can visualize this. And then when it says that we are going to find an 86% confidence interval. Well, actually, hold on. Let me go back one second. This p hat equals 0 0.5. We're assuming that's our best estimate for what P is. And if you recall from previous sections, the mean of the distribution of all possible sample proportions is equal to P, the population proportion. And this is our best guess. 4p. So in the middle, instead of putting 0, which would be the z score, I'm going to actually label this as 0 0.5. So the mean, the middle of this distribution is 0 0.5. Now, what does this 86% confidence interval mean? An 86% confidence interval is the same as asking for the middle 86% of the curve. So if I start in the middle and I start shading outward until I have shaded the middle 86%, then I end up with two values. This value down here in a confidence interval is called the lower bound. And this value up here is called the upper bound. And if you recall from previous sections, if we were doing a middle 86% confidence interval, here's 86%. We would say, okay, 86% of my curve is shaded. That means I have 14% unshaded. So that means this region has an area of 7%. And this region has an area of 7%. This 14% unshaded is our alpha. So up here looking at just the margin of error equation, we have Z alpha over 2. So this means we want to find the Z score where the unshaded amount, the unshaded region, is equal to 14%. And that's the total unshaded region. So we divide that by 2 to find just one of them. Because again, if we think back to how we did this before, we would have found ZA and ZB. And we would have found ZA first by finding the Z score that corresponds with the area to the left of it. And then ZB is the same but positive. Coming back up here, that's where this plus and minus comes in. 
So you have the positive z-score, you have the negative z-score times the standard deviation, and then we have the point estimate added on to that. So a confidence interval is really no different from finding the middle 86% of the curve. It's just wrapped up in a nice clean equation for us. So if I wanted to go ahead and find what that would be, I would do equals norm.s.dist Fourteen percent is the unshaded region, but I want half of that, so I would plug in zero point zero seven. Whoopsies! Oh no! Sorry, I'm doing this while I'm doing it because I was not prepared. Okay. Oops. Not dist. Hopefully you caught my mistake. Norm.s.inverse, not dist, inverse. And we get negative 1.4759, nope, 58. So this is the ZA we would have found, and ZB would be the same but negative. And then we go and we multiply that by the standard deviation, and we add the mean. That's basically what we're doing when we find a confidence interval. But then the result from the confidence interval is an estimate on where the population proportion is. So we do all this math, and the result is an estimate of where the population proportion may fall. Somewhere in between those two numbers. We don't know where exactly, but it's somewhere in between those two numbers. So this is the idea behind a confidence interval. And these are the two equations that we're going to use, or rather three equations, if you include the point estimate equation, that we're gonna use in our calculations of these confidence intervals. So coming back, looking at this one again, because this is the big one, you have your point estimate p hat, you add and subtract a z-score based on an alpha over 2, and that alpha is found by finding what percent of your curve is unshaded based on the given percent confidence interval times the standard deviation. And that is the introduction to confidence intervals.